Let's start off with our top story. And Russia says its troops are leaving Snake Island in the Black Sea, claiming it's a goodwill gesture to allow Ukraine to export agricultural products. The announcement came after Kiev launched several raids on Russian forces on the island, which is just off the coast of Ukraine. On June 30, as a gesture of goodwill, Russian armed forces complete their tasks on Snake Island and withdrew the garrison stationed there. This decision will mean Kiev cannot speculate on any impending food crisis or say that it is impossible to export grain due to Russia's total control of the northwestern part of the Black Sea. Now it's up to the Ukrainian side, which has not yet cleared its Black Sea coastline of mines, including in waters near its ports. Meanwhile, a day after NATO called Russia the biggest threat to its alliance, Moscow has ramped up its offensive in eastern Ukraine. Kiev says it's trying to evacuate residents from the eastern city of Lyshansk, which is currently the focus of Russia's attacks. Around 15,000 people in the city are facing relentless shelling from Russian forces. Despite a mounting death toll, though, Russia's President Vladimir Putin says that what the Kremlin calls its special military operation is going according to plan. The work is going calmly and rhythmically. As you can see, the troops are moving and reaching the lines that are set as a task at a certain stage of this combat work. Everything goes according to plan. So there is no need to talk about time. I never talk about it. Because this is life, there are real things. It is wrong to adjust them to some deadlines. Now, President Putin also claims that Russian forces are not targeting civilian sites. That's after at least 18 people were killed in a Russian strike on a crowded mall in the city of Kremenchuk in central Ukraine. The Russian army does not strike any civilian targets. We do not need to. We have every opportunity to determine what is where, and with modern high-precision long-range weapons, we strike these targets. On Wednesday, Ukraine announced the two sides had also carried out the biggest exchange of prisoners uh, since the invasion started. The Ukraine's uh, military intelligence agency says the majority of their released prisoners were badly wounded, suffering from gunshot and shrapnel root wounds, plus some other injuries. We have returned home 144 Ukrainian fighters from Russian captivity, including 59 National Guard fighters, 38 Navy fighters, 28 Armed Forces fighters, 17 Border Guards and one policeman. The oldest among the released fighters is 65 years old. The youngest is 19. In particular, 95 Azovstal defenders are coming home. Meanwhile, the UK has announced an additional $1.2 billion in military aid to Ukraine. The British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss also called on NATO members to step up their support for Ukraine. All we can to continue to support Ukraine with the weapons they need to win this appalling war. Because if we don't, it means that there'll be much greater threat for European security in the future. Today, we've announced an extra billion pounds of military aid to Ukraine to help them push Russia out of their territory. And we have to focus on keeping going, keeping the support going to Ukraine, keeping the sanctions on Russia, and really ignoring uh, the rhetoric from Vladimir Putin. What matters is what happens on the ground. Now, for more on this story, let's cross live to our correspondent, Sally Patterson, who is here in London as well. Uh, Sally, just break down for us what is in this latest uh, support package from the UK government. 
Well, as we heard there, this was a big announcement early local time on Thursday morning, an extra one billion pounds or around one point two billion dollars. Now, what's quite interesting about this budget is that it's formed of both government or departmental underspends, but also is made up of budgets from both the Welsh and the Scottish government parliaments. Now, these are both devolved and normally those governments focus on uh, domestic matters and foreign issues are left to Westminster UK government. So for these individual countries to be offering their own support is very telling of how strong their desire is to want to show their support for Ukraine amid the war. And so this total of $1.2 billion roughly doubles what the UK has already spent on military uh, support for Ukraine. They've also spent an additional £1.5 billion uh, on economic and uh, humanitarian aid. So this makes the UK probably the second biggest uh, supporter in terms of financial aid, second only to the United States, which recently promised $40 billion uh, to uh, Ukraine. But addressing the NATO conference in Madrid from video call, uh, Ukrainian President Zelensky said that it's costing Ukraine around $5 billion every month to keep up the war effort. So really, there is need, he says, for, for more support from NATO allies in order to fend off Russian uh, soldiers.